Hi, good good evening, everyone. I can see there are still few more people who are joining. So today, as per our plan, we are going to cover arguments how we can create reusable components, some examples of PDF automation, and how we can handle text file. However, we have seen string manipulation earlier. We will see how we can utilize Word. So we will see argument and reusability. So it is really important topic. So please concentrate. It might be a little bit difficult. However, reusability and creating reusable components is one of the best practices of development. So you should concentrate more and let me know. So we'll get started. As, as usual, we'll start UiPath application. I hope you guys have started too. Uh, keep your notes with you. Uh, there could be a lot of information today to write down. So I'm starting a new process. This is our D5. Arguments. So today we're going to see reusable arguments and PDF automation. Now this is one of the important part where we have to learn how we can create reusable components. Now to learn that how we can create reusable components. First of all, as usual, I'll take a flow chart. I'll drag a flow chart to the center, open it, save. And now let's see how we can break down a process into small, small sequences, which we can connect together and reuse again. So to understand functionality of reusability, I can give you an example, which is related to Java language. If you know, if anybody, any one of you have worked on Java earlier, then you guys might be knowing about classes. So a class can contain multiple methods and those methods combined together, create one class. Now this method we write separately so that all these methods come together and create one class a useful, uh, you know, information. So similarly like that, what we are going to do is we are going to break down entire process into multiple processes. And then we are going to connect all these processes together to create a meaningful outcome. Of it. And so what will happen is that if once you break down a process into small, small, multiple components, you can reuse them anytime. Okay. Now I have talked a lot. Let's see what we can do. So yesterday I have given you, I have given you one activity to do uh, capture data from fake name generator. So we'll automate this thing only. Let's go ahead and let's see how we can automate it. So every time I drag a sequence from here, now this time I will create another sequence from this option, which is new. Now what will happen once I create it from here, a new component will be created. It will be a new file workflow file, another than your main file. Now let's see what is it. I'll say open browser, create a new file is created. If you want to see, go to project, refresh, and you can see apart from main.xml, open browser.xml, a new file is created. Now let's go ahead and let's see what we can write in this new file. So I want to open a browser. So I will use this component just to open a browser. Now, before I go ahead and start automation, I want you to understand arguments. Now how arguments work. So there are three types of arguments in out and in slash out. Okay. Now how this in out and in slash out works. Now, for example, if you want a value to be used in workflow, then mark that argument as in okay if you want if you want a value to be used inside a workflow then you mark that value as in if you want to send value out of workflow then mark it as out and if you want to get value manipulate 
and send out updated value then you should use in slash out okay now what these three things are you might be confused a little bit but still write it down you'll understand very soon now what will happen see what is argument argument is nothing but a variable it is simply just like a variable however argument will allow you to pass a value of variable from one workflow to another workflow now i have created this project i can send value from this project to another project i can reuse my variable so argument is nothing but a variable but we can reuse it and we can pass it from one workflow to another now see how we can create argument so let's go to argument and let's create one argument called as url now once i create argument called as url check the direction now i have told you already there are three types of directions one is if you want a value to be used now in this workflow we want url to be used inside this workflow so that's why we will keep it in we want string and let's not give any default value and let's type here url now what i'm going to do is i am going to maximize window and that's it so this is nothing but my opening of browser so i'll create only a small component which is open browser now what i'm going to do i'm going to break down each and every operation into multiple operations now when i want you to fetch value of 10 different name sets uh, phone number birthdays that time i want you to repeat this page fetching data 10 times okay i have told you to capture 10 times in a loop now selecting this value from the drop down is only one time process this process is not a 10 time process so what i'll do i'll break down this selection of this three particular drop downs as another workflow so i'll break down this workflow as selection of drop down drop down so i'll go to main and create one more sequence called as selecting country i'll create it in this selecting country i will use first of all attach browser i will go to the specific i'll drag attach browser i'll indicate this browser now i will check the selector if it is generic that is great remove this and just keep it star in case those who have attended yesterday's lecture they might sorry day before uh, yesterday's lecture they might have understood why i have used selector so once click okay save and now i want to select three drop downs so what i'll do select item activity i have drag the select item activity inside indicate element gender which is a drop down automatically a drop down came i select mail again one more select item activity indicate name set i wanted to select australian so this is there otherwise you can select any other value from this drop down select one more value which is country and this time i wanted to select australia now this is only one workflow okay so i'll keep it like this now let's say if i want to send values of australia or this name set from outside then i might use argument however i want only these values as constant as of now So I'll keep this workflow without any argument. So I have created till now two workflows: open browser and selecting country. Close this and close this window. Now what I want to do after I have created two components: opening a browser, selecting this. Now I want to repeat ten times, clicking on generate button and catching these values and sending these values into a database. Now to create a database, first of all, what I'll do is. i will first of all create one more sequence which says database or data table creation now anyhow we are going to see how to create a data table however as of now for our need let's utilize one activity which is called as build a data table so we will drag build data table now what is built data table 
build data table is nothing but a activity which allows you to create a skeleton of a data table without creating any excel or some anything so you can actually create a data table skeleton if you click on this it will open a wizard now you just close this wizard sorry close this already existing data delete this and create from start so i want first name now remember how you have written the name of the columns i want last name i want date of birth let's check the date of birth is there yes date of birth is there phone number is there so i want date of birth i want phone number and what else we want let's say this is it okay so i want as of now i'll capture only first name last name date of birth phone number and let's say i'll catch address also address i'll say this is i'll drag address here so i'm capturing first name then last name then address then date of birth and then phone number okay click okay remember the sequence now we have built a skeleton if you see five columns with string value remember the column names okay now we will create a data table for it so that what happens this skeleton is stored in some data table and later when we capture data from actually fake name generator we are going to send the data into this data table so let's go here and let's create a skeleton called as create variable and say this is our uh, sorry now this time we don't want to create a variable this time we are utilizing another workflow and as per our rule we want to send this data table outside out of the workflow so we will keep the direction as out because we want to use this workflow use this data table outside so what i'll do i'll create argument called as sample dt and keep the direction out and keep the argument type as data table okay and then write the sample data here sample dt okay now i have created till now three different components if you see opening a browser selecting country creating a data table creation now there is one activity in ui path to use this component as again and again reusable and we want to merge it together uh yes okay this is sure i'll do that see to create a data table what you have to do you have to drag build data table activity when you drag a build data table activity you have a skeleton you have a option here to open the wizard and then there will be some already existing data you remove that data and you create a new column using the column name data type which you want if you want to allow null if you want some default value if you want unique value then you can you can modify this as per your requirement and maximum length is minus 1 which can take up to any number and then you can say okay to add this column so in such a way you can create a skeleton now once you create a skeleton you can go ahead and you can create a data table for that now once you create a data table this is just a sample data table now you are going to send it outside using argument to you reuse again now you guys must be confused uh, i hope tejish you have what <coughs> i hope tejish you have understood so uh, let's go ahead with the next one so what we have to do now we have to club all these things together okay now to club these things together what i'll do i'll move start button here i'll drag open browser now see to use workflow which is another than your main workflow what you have to do you have to use activity which is called as invoke workflow file activity invoke workflow file write down the name of the activity invoke workflow file however when you when you say connect it from start node and when you click on the invoke workflow file it ask you for a workflow path now click on this three dots and select your workflow which is open browser and say open once you click what happens automatically your open browser workflow is selected 
Now let's go to open browser and let's see. In the open browser, we had one argument which was requesting for a direction inside. So this time in main, what we are going to do is we are going to click and click on import argument. And you can see that argument here. It is requesting for a value to be entered inside this workflow. So let's give the URL here. What is the URL? Fake name generator.com. And save it. So this is how I just invoked open browser workflow within flowchart. And there is another way to do this rather than using invoke workflow file, I can directly drag. So let's drag a workflow from here directly here. So this also creates automatically a invoke workflow file. There were no arguments. So it is empty. Now we want to drag data table creation. So let's drag data table creation here. Check there was one argument which was sending value outside. Now remember whenever the direction of argument is out, you need to create a variable in the local browser in the local main. Now right click and say create variable and say uh, any give any name data or let's say skeleton skeleton DT. Now what just happened? It will show you error, but don't don't worry. Just click on OK save and again open the error will go it will, will go now once you create a variable here this variable will be automatically created as a data table now what is happening exactly in this workflow when you create a data table inside this workflow and you pass it to outside using direction out we are going to get that value from that workflow and we are going to store it in the local variable which is skeleton dt so now what we have, we have a local variable skeleton DT, which is data table. And now we want to go ahead and we want to fetch these values 10 times. Now let's see how this goes. Okay. So what we are going to do, we are going to create one more sequence. In this sequence, we are going to say looping data create now in looping data, what we are going to do is first of all, we are going to create one assign activity because I want 10 data. So I'm going to create one counter for myself counter, which is integer, sorry, which is integer. I will initialize this counter is equals to one. Then I'm going to, to repeat 10 times. I'm going to take a while loop. So take, so take a while loop, say when counter is sorry. When counter is less than or equals to 10 till the time I want to repeat. And now I'm going to drag attach browser inside this while loop. And I'm going to repeat all the performance. What I'm going to do on this browser 10 times before that I'll modify the selector to make it generic. Save. And now I'm going to repeat. So let's see, click. Sorry, click indicate this generate button, save. Let's go to get full text. Indicate this name. Now we want male Australian. So let's click on this one. Let's indicate again, indicate this value. Now let's check the selector. If the name is there, it is not there. Not a problem. Then save it. Create a variable for that, which is a full name. Now I want only first name and last name separate. So I get assign. Now see how I'm going to break it into two. Okay. So this time I'm going to create a variable called as first name, another variable called as last name. I write here first name. Now what I want to do is I want to split this name. And I want to get only first name. So to split it, what is the delimiter? It is space. So I'll tell full name dot split. Let's go to the value and let's type it here. So what I'm going to do is full name dot split split whenever, sorry, split whenever space is there. 
to a character array and the zeroth index will be my first name so what i did i just did i took full name i used split method then i split into wherever there is a space i utilize two char array zero zero means the first index because i am going to break it down into two parts jackson and wong so jackson is going to be the zeroth index wong is going to be the first index and what is going to store in my first index it is my last name now i'll copy this entire value and just instead of zero i am going to write one just like that i got first name and last name now i'm going to capture address so let's get use one more get full text activity click on the address and just create one variable for address now you might be wondering why i'm not creating arguments this time because i don't want to send these values okay i don't want to send these values outside i want to send this values directly inside a data table so i am going to use argument however i am going to use another type of argument i'll show you that if if there is a middle name then you have to use in uh, another index like two in second index for last name otherwise you have to put up a counter or a check mechanism where you just check whether how many words are there in particular statement and then based on that you decide what you want to capture which index so you can put up that condition now i'll capture the address and i know there is going to be a space in that address so i'll just trim the address address is equal to address dot trim so trim function will trim what are the extra spaces which comes before this specific address and after this specific string and now i'm going to use one more get value to get the phone number i'll write here phone number again there might be some spaces in the phone number so i'll convert it into string and then i'll take one more assign i'll tell phone number is equals to phone number dot trim and then i'll use one more get full text i'll get birthday date of birth going to create one more variable called as dob convert it into string and this time also i am going to use same assign and trim the date of birth if there contains any white spaces and just like that i got all four values and now i want to send all these values to the data table which we have created earlier if you remember here now to do that first of all we have to send each and every value so we will include this inside while loop so inside while loop what i'm going to do is as soon as i got all four values i'm going to do add data row activity now add data row is activity which comes under data table functions where you can add a data row directly to the data table now this time to add a data row i need data table name and i need array of row so data table name is not here in this website in this uh, workflow so i want to take as a argument from outside so this time i'll create one argument called as sample dt it is direction is in and we want it to be a data table so we are going to take it from outside and we are going to write here as sample dt now we are going to send this values to the sample dt and then we want array of row array of row is nothing but we are adding four values four variables so i'll use curly braces first i'm sending first name then i'm sending last name then i'm sending the address then i'm sending date of birth and then phone number i think this was the same sequence however you can see there is one error so to remove this error what we have to do is we have to remove this dot if you can see there is a small dot before this variable name remove all the small dots because we directly want to send the value of these variables inside data table 
I'll remove all these dots and then I'll say okay and save. Now once this is saved, this is going to save uh, send all these values inside this data table. Now where we are going to map that, we are going to map it outside. However, we forgot one more thing. Once we got all this information, what we want to do is we want to keep counter incrementing. Otherwise, this will go in an infinite loop. So let's go ahead and let's increment the counter. We'll say counter is equals to counter plus one. Save. And now we are going to add this looping data below this data table creation. And we are going to pass as an input to this particular data what we took output from the previous data table. So what we took as the output, we took skeleton DT as output. So this time we are going to pass the skeleton DT to this particular data table as value. So this is skeleton DT. And that's it. Okay. Now this skeleton DT will go inside and it will create value. However, what we want is once it goes inside, it creates data, it stores the data, and then we want it back outside again. So what are we going to do this time? So which we, which type of argument we want to use to create, to hit this data and get updated data back again. So we will create argument type as in and out. And now we'll see this looping data just got changed to a data table value. So what we are going to do, we are going to send skeleton DT and we are going to get the same value outside again, updated inside skeleton DT data table. Okay. And now once this is all done, what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and print this data into a CSV file or an Excel file. So let's create one sequence, one more sequence this time and say store in Excel. Now store in Excel needs one data table, which is, which we received from looping data. So we are going to take one argument as input DT. We can rename anything. We want this inside. So we will keep the direction as in and we'll use Excel sorry, workbook. And we are going to use right range activity of a workbook. In the workbook path, just mention any name that, is, that doesn't matter. Let's say fake name data dot xlsx. I want data from sheet one and I'm going to write here input dd, save, and I want headers also. So I'll say add header and save. Now this is just going to get input as a data table and going to create one Excel. That's it. And once everything is done, I want to go ahead and I want to close the browser. So I'll say close browser. However, we will see, let's, let's see how this goes first. So before we get, get started with this, let's slow down the looping as of now. Instead of 10, I'll just put four and let's verify for four. And then in the main, we want to add that store in Excel value. So let's drag it here and pass skeleton data save let's go back and let's now execute it from start but before executing i want to check whether i selected chrome browser or not for the open browser so let's select chrome come back and now let's execute it from main and run now let's see what happens it automatically opens browser. It selects, then it clicks on generate button. One time, 
second time third time and fourth time so we have four data and now it's done now let's go to project refresh and you can see fake data dot xlsx is created open that and verify and see you have your data present here so we just now utilized argument functionality to reuse this particular workflow and create a project okay which okay i'll go a bit slow which can capture data from web page okay four times so i'll i'll explain once again first of all what is argument argument is nothing but there are three types of arguments there are three types of directions of those arguments in out in and out so in is used when you want to take a value inside workflow out is used when you want to send value out to the uh, out to the main workflow and in and out when you want to take value in and you want to send updated value outside so in this workflow we have utilized all three types first of all what did i do is i created sequences from here okay so i created a reusable sequence called as open browser which can take a value as url i have written it as an argument i have taken this value as an url argument whose direction is in now what happens when i add this open browser workflow inside my main workflow that time i want to send value from main to this workflow and that is why my argument is in and that argument is going to pass that value directly to the, to the url okay i hope you have understood this one now why i have created this workflow because now once i have created once i have utilized this workflow which is fake name generator if i want to open this time a workflow a, a browser for uh, you know rpa challenge then i have to just utilize open browser again and instead of passing fake name this time i have to pass the value of rpa challenge website now what happened i just utilized rather than creating a new workflow i just reutilized already existing workflow and i passed a value which is of rpa challenge now so what happened i can reuse already existing component i used it two times also i can use it in another workflow so this is what is the use exact use of argument and reusability so that we can create multiple components and use it again and again whenever we want now there you want to understand three things what how the direction works so for this one we went with in direction because we are sending this value inside this workflow now after i created a, a open browser what i did i went ahead i selected name from the drop down so here i did not need any type of argument so i did not took after that i utilized one workflow to create a data table and that data table has to come outside inside main because i want to use this data table in main workflow and pass it to another workflow so for that i kept its direction as out now this time i gave a value now always remember whenever so you can remember using a shortcut whenever you are using in direction flow you have to pass a value and whenever you are using out direction flow then you have to create a local variable and whenever you have in slash out then you have to every time create a local variable which will be editable okay now what happens this time i took this data table i created data table here in this data table creation workflow i sent this data table to out by creating argument as direction out this out direction helped me to get my workflow outside and send it to another workflow which is looping data now this looping data here what happens here we are taking a data table value we are first of all going through all this four different different four different data fetching operations where we are capturing data first name last name 
uh, address, contact details, and we are sending that data into data table. That means what we are doing, we are taking data as input, and also at the same time, we are manipulating the value of already existing data table, and we are sending it back out again. So for that, we have to use in slash out direction where we are going to take the data table inside and then we are going to edit the data and send it back outside. Okay, so we have seen all three types of usage of this particular argument. Then we stored that value into Excel. For Excel, we just had to send that value inside this workflow. So I used in direction. Now once the value is stored inside Excel, what I have to do, I have to open browser and I have to open RPA challenge. And then one by one, I have to operate on RPA challenge to enter the data. Now this time, what I have to do, I have to I create a variable called as uh, fill in RPA challenge. Now when I want to fill the data inside RPA challenge, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take argument as a data table because I am going to receive a data table inside this workflow and I want all the rows to be rows of those data to be entered inside my inside RPA challenge four times. What I'm going to take, I'm going to take a value of a data table. So let's say sample DT as in and data type is data table. Now see why I took it as in because when I open browser of RPA challenge, already there is some data in the Excel. I want to enter all those data row by row into RPA challenge four times. So that is why I'm going to take argument in data table. Now to repeat each, to go through each and every row, which control flow do we have to use? Can you tell, can anybody tell me? To enter data row by row, which Control flow logic I have to use for each row. Exactly, exactly. Right, right, right. Now let's go ahead and say for each row. Now for each row we have seen in the control flow, if you have used it, for each row goes through row by row through each and every row of this particular Excel. And this time I have taken that value as sample duty. Now for each row in sample duty, I have to attach a browser indicate this is my browser create a selector which is generic okay and now i have to utilize four times anchor base because you know right this anchor base we have to use it because this website is tough to capture selector find element i want first name and I want to type into first name text box. Now look at screen properly. This time it is going to be really important. See, this time I'm taking for each row from this sample data table. Now my values are stored inside this rows. So I'm traversing one by one with one row. So for the first row, what is the column name? Can you tell me what is the name of the column? If I write the first, if I want to write the first name, where do I get to see the name of the column? No, it is not going to be index. It is going to be first name. How do I know that? Because we have stored that value in Excel. So let's open the Excel and check what were the name of those rows. So first name, last name, address, date of birth and phone number. Now, where does this value come from? Do you remember who wrote these values? Where does this value come from? Exactly. We wrote this value while we created a skeleton for data. So that data skeleton, we created one column name, right? As a skeleton, that skeleton is just this data row name. Now we are going to use this names of the same data first name so we are going to use right here as row bracket in double quotation first name now it has to be exactly same because it's a case sensitive 
So row first name dot to string. Now another anchor. Similarly, we are going to repeat the situation. Find element and type into. Now first of all, we'll find the element, which is our last name. Indicate the last name text box and write row of last name dot to string. Save. Take one more anchor base. Take find element. Take time into. Now indicate the element which is what we are taking. We are taking address, right? So let's indicate address. Then indicate the address space and write here row of address dot to string. Now remember, we are writing the name of this rows exactly similar to this data. And we want date of birth and phone number. However, is there any feature to add date of birth? No. So it's okay. We can skip one of the value from data row. We will just utilize our phone number field. So let's go and let's enter the phone number. So we'll utilize one more anchor base. We'll drag find element here. We'll drag type into here. We'll indicate the phone number field. We'll indicate the phone number text box field. And we'll say row of phone number. And we are going to say two string. Now verify whether it is same phone number. Yes, it is same. Okay. And then finally, once we enter all this data, we are going to click on submit button. And that's it. Now what we have done, we have just created a workflow which enters data automatically inside this logic. Okay, inside fake name generator. Sorry, uh, what is that RPA challenge. Now we have stored the value we have opened the browser and we have fill in RPA challenge. So drag this fill in RPA challenge below this open browser. And we have created an argument to take data table inside. Now what is the data table which currently has the value? The name of the data table is a local variable skeleton DT. So we are going to pass that skeleton DT inside. Save. And now once this is done, once everything is done, we are going to close both the browsers. So I'll say for that, what I'll do, I'll create one more sequence. Sequence, close fake name data. Okay. So to close the fake name, what I'm going to do is I am going to first of all attach browser. Indicate on screen. Indicate the fake name website. And I'm going to say close the tab. I'm going to edit the selector this time. Validate, say okay, and close fake name. And after that, we are going to close. RPA challenge. I'll say create. And now here also I will use attach browser activity. Indicate on screen. RPA challenge website. And say close the tab. And once this is done, we are going to add this workflows inside our main, which says close fake name and then close RPA challenge. And hence we have created all these workflows, which are reusable workflows, and we have attached all those workflows in one single main. Now let's go from start and let's see how this exactly works. Let's go back and let's run this workflow. Now let's check before running this workflow, check whether we have open browser while doing, while opening fake name, have we selected the browser as Chrome? Yeah. Okay. No problem. Close it and let's run. Now 
every workflow is going to work together to create a whole workflow. Now see, open browser worked, then selection of the dropdown is going to work. Okay, it is not working, there's some issue. Let's trigger, what is the issue? Go ahead. It is not selecting value from this gender. How much time it will wait to throw the error? Okay, select and not found. 30 seconds, perfect. No, no, no. Right. Now this selector is not found. Let's repair and let's see why this is not finding. Wait, let's go back. This is perfect. So selector of the outer website is perfect. Selector here went wrong. And what went wrong here? Let's go refresh this Chrome. Okay. No problem. Let's run it again. I think selectors are okay. So let's keep one refresh browser activity before it actually selects, just in case. Let's run. It selected and then it clicked on generate for one time, second time, third time. Now see, it is clicking the looping mechanism. Now once looping is done, it will go ahead and it will fill the data into Excel and then it will open RPA challenge. Then it will start filling the data into RPA challenge. Submit. Again, start filling the second value from Excel. Submit. Again, start filling the third value submit and the fourth value submit and hence the workflow is done and both the browsers are also closed so this is how you break down entire workflow into multiple components and combine it together to create one workflow together so this is what is the workflow i expect from you guys to create okay when i told you to create a workflow yesterday uh, so ideally this is how the workflow should be because now going forward, whenever I want to utilize any component out of this workflows, I can use it simply. Now let's see if I want to create, if I want to utilize the same particular one value of open browser into another UI path into another project, can I use it? You might have such question because internally within this project, I'm able to use this workflow, but can I use this open browser? from another project. Let's see. Sample project. Can I do this? What do you think? Yes, we can do this. How create main workflow. Thank you, Shripad. Yeah, we can do it. Go to flow chart. Let's drag the flow chart, open it. And when I want to use this same workflow, which is stored right now in the another workflow, what I have to do, I have to just drag a invoke workflow file activity, drag this invoke workflow file activity here and go inside. It says workflow path. Now click on this three dots. You will be navigated to the folder structure. Now go back and select the folder structure, which is day five. And inside day five, we have open browser. So click on this open browser and say open. 
and automatically you have an argument to enter the URL. And now here I enter URL, let's say www.google.com and say, okay, save. And once I open that, let's see if it works in another workflow. Let's run. And now it opens Google. Similarly, I can just change the URL and I can open any website that I want to use www.amazon.in I can run and I can utilize the same workflow to open any work to in to open any website which I want to see. So this is how you create a reusable component and you can utilize it anywhere so that your work reduces to create a workflow every time. Okay. Yes, you can reuse that workflow also. However, for specific applications, when you're automating something which is very specific, which doesn't have anything uh, which we can reuse, that time reusability has a limitation. So for desktop, you can create multiple reusable components, but for virtual machine, when you're automating some virtual machine, uh, there is very less chance where you can create reusable components because the data will be very specific for the application. Thank you, Ashish. I'll answer to your question, Jani. Uh, we have still PDF automation to cover. I'll close this browse, close this workflow. I hope you have understood how to utilize this one. Now I'll combine this entire workflow together in one sequence, which I'll call it as. I'll take one sequence. I'll call that sequence as argument example save now what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this entire workflow oh man why it is going so slow why okay cut and let's paste it inside argument example. Okay, wait. Now after this, we are going to check how we can utilize What are the PDF automation? What is PDF automation? How we can automate multiple different types of PDFs. So we are going to see how we can automate different types of PDFs after this. So let's store all this workflow inside one sequence. Now I can select multiple sequences together. However, when you copy it, what happens? Those sequences get copied into inverse direction. So I don't want that because I'm going to share this workflow with you. You might have, you might face some problem while executing. That is why I'm just cutting each and every component and pasting it as possible. Okay, now let's cut it and paste it inside here. Go back and the last component. And that's it. You come back to argument example and paste the last component here. And done. So this is our argument example which we have seen. Now let's see PDF automation. Okay, so before we go forward with PDF automation, let's add some sample PDFs inside our workflow folder. So I have some sample PDFs and copy all these PDFs. I'm sorry, just copy and paste it here. Now let's see how we can automate PDF before PDF automation, if I go to the activities, if I type PDF, there are no available packages and there are no activities of PDF. So what do I have to do? I have to go to manage packages, go to official and type PDF here. And I have a PDF package, uipath.pdf activities. 
I'll click on this package. I'll say install, save, and accept. Now, once you download this package, you can see multiple PDF activities which will be available for you. I'll just type PDF and you have multiple PDF activities, which is export PDF as, as image, extract images from PDF, extract PDF page range, get PDF page count, join PDF files, manage PDF password, read PDF text, and read PDF with OCR. Now we are going to see different examples of PDFs. So first of all, let me just take one PDF. Uh, I'll close this one. I'll open a sample PDF from our folder. Let's open not this folder, which where is our folder of UiPath. Go to project, open the folder. Okay. Now we'll open a sample simple text PDF. Now always remember whenever you are capturing any value from already open PDF. Okay. Remember or write it down somewhere. When you're capturing value from already open PDF, you have to make sure that PDF is open in Adobe Acrobat and the zoom ratio is hundred percent. When you are capturing values from already open PDF. Now, as of now, we will see how to capture data from PDF. Now in this PDF, there are two pages. In the first page, I have simple PDF file text written here. And on the second page, there is written as simple PDF file two. Now what I want to do is I want to capture only PDF page one data and I want to print it, write it into a text file. Okay. Now how I'm going to do that. Let's go to UI path. Let's take one sequence. I'll name the sequence as simple PDF connected to the start node and now go inside the PDF and just say type PDF. Now to read a simple PDF. Now, what do I mean by simple and native PDF native PDF means I'm go able to select the data and copy the data. And what does it mean by image PDF where I will not be able to select such data. I will have to uh, just select entire image. The part of the PDF will be content of the PDF will be scanned. As of now, it is not scanned. It is simple PDF. So for a simple PDF, I will use read PDF text activity. I will drag read PDF text activity here. Now in the properties, if you see what it says, file name. So let's click on this folder and select the PDF. What is the PDF name? Simple text and say open. That's it. You can select any PDF from your specific folder location also by navigating to that location. So don't worry about it. You don't have to every time store it in the same project file. You can get it from anywhere from your folder structure. Now on the right hand side in the properties, if you see when you read the information from this PDF, there is multiple operation. If the PDF is password protected, you can enter the password here. If the PDF you want to read the range. Now range is by default written as all. I want range as only first page. So in order to write the only first page, I'll say double quotation and I'll write one. Now why double quotation? Because range is always written in string format. Okay. So I'll say one. If I want to read pages from, let's say, two to five in PDF page range of 10 to, uh, yeah, you can use get full text, not a problem Priya. However, to use get full text, you have to first of all, open PDF. But if you don't want to open PDF and without opening PDF, you want to read the data that is very easily done by read PDF text activity. So that is why I'm using read PDF text activity. Priya. I hope you understand. You can utilize get full text. We will see that also. Now I'll select the page range one and I will create one variable in the text of output to store that value. And I'll call it as let's say I'll call it as PDF text or simple text. And then I want to store it into a text file. So I'll say write text file. I'll say the text is simple text. So the variable and the file name is PDF page one dot txt. Don't mention to give the take file format. And now what I'll do is I'll just select the sample PDF and I'll say, now see my PDF is open. I'll close it. Let's see if the PDF is closed. Will it still work? 
let's run. And that's it, it's done. Let's open the output and it's done in only one second. Let's go to project and open the folder structure and you see there is a text file created called as PDF page one. Open the text file and there is your text. Now open the PDF parallelly. And check whether the same data is printed or not. Now, if you see in the text file, the same data as this one is printed here only of the first page. So you can easily get text from one PDF from a single page, or if you want entire PDF to read, then you can just change the page range to all in the range property. Now this is about a simple PDF or a native PDF, how you can read that particular PDF. Now let's look at another example of a PDF. Now let's say I have a PDF, which is mixture of both. Okay. And also this PDF is little bit complicated. Okay. Now this time what's happening is let's open PDF to hundred percent. This time I have a header of this PDF. Okay. No problem. I can do that. And the challenge this time is the PDF text is written in paragraph. Now when the PDF text is written in paragraph, it should not read right a uh, line like this. It was November and then heavily embellished embellished. Other than that, I want to read first this paragraph, then this paragraph and then this paragraph. Now there's going to be some issue with this. Yes, you can write a logic for that Abhilash. <clears throat> we will, will get to that. Now see when I want to just read this type of PDF where there is only uh, paragraphs written and then again, there's some value. Now on this page of this PDF, there is some value, which is again, selectable native. Okay. Not a problem. Now this is not written in English. However, the writing language is English. So we can capture this text, not a problem. And for this text, let's try to select this text. I am not, why I'm not able to select this text. Can anybody tell me why am I not able to select this text? Because it's an image. Exactly. Now this is a image inside a PDF. Now this might happen sometime where PDF is native and suddenly the change is there that PDF becomes image. Now this time when I want to read this information, we'll try both the ways. Now let's go to UI path back. Let's go to activities and let's type PDF. Now there are two activities, read PDF text and read PDF with OCR. Now we'll verify both the values, which one is better in this case. So let's go ahead and let's take a sequence and we'll say this is a mix PDF with image and set it as a start node. Save, go to the PDF and now utilize both the activities, read PDF text and also read PDF text with OCR. Now, first of all, I'll indicate this PDF for both the applications, for both the activities, first one and the second one. Is my voice audible to everyone? Okay. Okay. Because somebody is getting problem, not a problem. So yeah, Lakshmi Gant, can you please just try again? Now I have selected both the PDFs and this time I want to give OCR engine to read PDF with OCR to give the OCR engine. I'll just type OCR and I have engine. Now earlier we have seen, we have Microsoft and we have Tesseract. So I'll drag Microsoft this time here and I'll close it. Now let's go to the properties and create variable for both of them. For this one, I'll create a variable called as simple 
read and this is read with ocr ocr read and the both files we are going to store into a text file so we will drag write text file two times once and or let's say we'll write no we'll will create two files okay so text is simple read and here text is ocr read here the file name is simple text dot pdf sorry dot txt and here we'll say ocr text dot txt and let's run this activities and let's see what happens this time but this pdf is open let it be open doesn't matter even if it is closed even though it is going to read let's run and i think it's done now it took a little more time than earlier because this time we are using functionality of ocr so ocr will take some time now let's go back to the project go to the folder location open the folder structure and check both the things ocr text and simple text let's open simple text first let's open it parallelly with the pdf and we'll observe what data is displayed here now if you see it was november although it was not late yet and here the text is copied sample text image pdf okay perfectly fine however it was november although it was not late yet was mapped with heavily embellished and that is on the another paragraph so this goes wrong so this information is not of any use and also after nuns congu that means after this particular part of the pdf this information is not readed because activity which is read pdf text activity will not copy image part or the text which is from image so it will simply just not copy that and it will not show so it will copy till only readable file okay now this went wrong now let's try the text file which we have written with ocr which is ocr text let's go to the particular file and let's see ocr text and keep it here and parallelly open pdf now see sample text and image pdf okay it is printed and this time we have entire paragraph instead of new line started from here so we have it was november although it was not late yet and the sky was dark and yes we have entire paragraph after that we should have a letter and immediately after that we have a letter paragraph so that's perfect so this method of reading with ocr is perfectly going right for paragraph also now let's go down and let's see if we have the data which we want so let's say nuns congu this data is printed and also if you see the data which is in the image part which is this lauren epson dolor citamate is also printed in this particular file so that means we are able to capture text perfectly from pdf and write it into a notepad so that means what we can do is we can utilize read pdf text with ocr for better performance and getting all the information which is even written inside image as a text and also it understands the paragraph now this is how you read pdf using read pdf text and read pdf with ocr now what happens what is the best way of doing operation while working with pdf is that to capture entire pdf as a string first and then using string manipulation operation you separate out each and every value and then you utilize that value into your workflow it is as simple as that now let's try another activities from pdf package now there is one more thing which says extract pdf page range get pdf page count so get pdf page count will not only will only give you output as an integer 
with the total count of PDF number page number. Then you have join PDF files. You can merge two PDF files into one. You have extract PDF from extract images from PDF. You can extract actual images which are stored inside PDF as image and write it into a specific folder. You can export PDF page as image. So you can export a specific page of PDF as an image. For that, you just have to drag this and check what it needs. It needs a file name of PDF. It needs the output file name of what image you are going to write. It needs DPI. You want 96, 150, or 300 dots per inch? Yes, Ashish, you can give real time, uh, you know, use case to me. I will try to solve it in my free time. I'll give, definitely get back to you. You can ping me personally, and we'll we'll work on that. And now let's jump on to one more way of capturing data from PDF. Now let's say I have a PDF invoice. Okay. Now this is my invoice. Now in this invoice, I have some data which is written as invoice number, invoice date, and there is some date information as an address. Now what I exactly want, I want to capture invoice number, I want to capture the date from this PDF, and I want to store it in let's say Excel. Okay, and similarly, this type of PDF, there will be multiple invoices, and the pattern is going to remain same, exactly same. Okay, pattern is going to remain, ex remain exactly same. However, every time this invoice number is going to change and every time this date is going to change and the name of this particular user is going to change, company is going to change. Now I want to make my capturing of invoice value a generic. So there are two ways for this. One way, what you can do is, let's take a sequence, connect it to the start node and say read text file, read PDF. Okay, now take this particular PDF, which is sample invoice dot PDF. Okay, now there's one way to capture this value. Okay, convert it into a string and capture all those values using string manipulation. And instead of the name of the PDF, what we'll do, we'll remove this value of PDF name and instead, sorry, Instead, we are going to break it to a variable. That variable will be, let's say, PDF name. And we are going to write that particular variable here as PDF name. So what happens? This time, you just have created a reusable activity, which is read PDF text, which can read any type of .pdf file. And instead of PDF name, you just have to pass the name of the particular PDF, which you might download from email, which you might get from some specific folder location or which you might get from some specific, uh, you know, file. And then you can read that PDF file and you can utilize. Another way is, can I go ahead? So rather than doing this, can I go ahead and can I capture directly use get full text activity to capture data from screen or maybe get text. So let's drag get text and indicate on screen indicate this part of PDF. I'm able to indicate element inside PDF also. Now you might be wondering, are there selectors for this? So let's go ahead and let's check. Yes, there is a selector to capture this value also. Now how to make this selector generic? To make the selector generic, we know that title has a name of PDF. So instead of this invoice number, I will replace it with star. Instead of this value of invoice, I replace it with star and hence, now I can capture any invoice from any similar type of PDF. Now let's click on okay. Can I capture date? Let's indicate date. I'm not able to separately capture invoice date and due date. Let's capture both together. And let's say what happens, go to the selector. Yes, there is a selector. You can separate out and you can make it reusable by replacing the value of title with star. And instead of this date, every time this date is going to get started with the invoice date name. So instead of that, I will replace this entire value with only star. And let's validate and see if it is highlighting the same element. Yes, it is. 
and similarly so on i will go ahead i will get one more text i capture the text called as company name now this time let's see what is going to be the company name so you have company name here you have name of the title you can remove this you can make it reusable however name is going to change okay randomly then what if what if i want to remove this name i'll just go to open ui explorer i want to remove this name because this name is going to change entirely i cannot put it star here anywhere if i change everything and if i just put it star like this to entire name will i get the same element or a different element let's highlight it i'm going to get different element see so this time i don't want to take a risk what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply indicate element this one change the inverse number to star validate add anchor as invoice 2 and once i have a anchor can i replace this name with star verify validate it doesn't work so you have to create a selector to capture this element and you have to create it such stable element that every time it captures this value now if it is not working with the anchor of invoice 2 now what went wrong is that we are not able to capture the name and we are not able to even utilize anchor now you will say this time we have lost all the options to capture value from our particular pdf right however it is not lost what will happen if you read entire pdf into one text file as a string you can simply capture whatever text is written next to invoice 2 on a new line you can capture that data very easily using string manipulation so there is no limit to logic you can implement any type of logic either if you don't have any selector go ahead with a hard coded logic so there is no limit to the logic okay now let's see whether we have captured this data which is we have captured which we have captured from screen as of now i'll just keep it like this and i'll create variables for this values so let's say i'll create it as invoice number So what is my invoice number going to be? It is going to be invoice hash invoice number. So I just want to replace that hash invoice, and I just want number. This time I'm going to use invoice number is equals to invoice number dot. Now tell me what string mechanism I have to use to capture only number out of this particular string. Split, okay. Can you can you write down the function like invoice number dot split and how do I have to use it? Can anybody write it down in the chat section quickly? How do I get only number from this entire text? Invoice number dot split hash. It will just split. I want to get the number specifically, which is written after hash. is digit uh, no pile because we do, we are not sure that we are capturing only digits because this entire string into character is into string now it is stored into characters pratik you are close invoice number dot split hash bracket 1 but that bracket is not a curly braces it's a circle braces first of all yeah yes you can utilize substring that is one way another way shripad you are also close but you guys are forgetting something okay i have i have same type of option you guys are forgetting something i'll show you exactly yeah who is kamal deep kamal deep has written perfect answer which is invoice number dot split hash dot to character array and then select one because we are going to select the index which is second index perfect invoice number dot 
split hash dot to char array you guys forgot dot to character array then circle braces in one because two character array is going to give you a separate character by character array which is going to be one index from the right uh, left hand side of this hash and another index is from the right hand side of the hash so the first index will be zero next index will be one so we want index one that is why we got inverse number then we have as of now i'll not spend much time on that so i'll say date uh, from pdf let's say something like this and then we have company name okay now we will write all this information into one message box let's see quickly to display so as we have very less time drag a message box and let's write invoice number plus environment dot new line plus we have date plus environment dot new line i'm using environment dot new line to print all this data into new line separately okay and then the company name and let's see if it is going to catch the data from pdf run and it captures data perfectly we have our invoice number we have our date and we have the name of the company now i have i had to show you other usage of this pdf activities however we have very less time so we you i will ask you guys to create one of the use case and i'll share you a use case and go ahead and try all these activities from pdf see most of the times we utilize only this method to capture data from pdf because we are not able to write data into pdf so what is the use of pdf only to read data and that is where we have very less operations with the pdf but logic building needs more okay so we have seen pdf examples today how to capture data from pdf using different ways another example i had to give however i think i have given you already while showing you data scraping then can we capture tabular information from pdf i think we have seen this already however let's for new people we'll see it once again can we capture a tabular data from pdf what i have to use here which function i have to use inside ui path not screen scraping it's data scraping so i'll have to click on data scraping select next and just indicate any of the element and yes you can capture entire data table from a pdf and to get entire values just write zero and finish so i hope you can do this with this workflow today i am going to share all the sample pdf files which are there which i have utilized to show you this workflow and also i hope you guys will create argument example workflow completely which enters value which takes value from a uh, you know fake name generator and which stores value into excel and then it stores all those values into rp challenge website so i hope you have loved this session and i'll put all this data into the drive which i have shared with you now let's give i'll give you one task for tomorrow okay now what is task is going to be now remember the task okay and i'm going to verify those who have sent me workflow already so yes riyas you can get only due date you can do that if you need only due date what you can do you can utilize string manipulation here so i'll tell you what once you capture data this data is into string format right and the data is written on the new line so this time you are going to write a logic to capture only data which is written on the second line so i have captured data uh, date in date variable right date out variable or date pdf variable so i'll write date pdf dot split split into and this time i have to split into environment dot new line dot two char array and one now this logic will give me only date which is my due date because it is written on the new line 
So I'm breaking the string where there is a new line. So to break the string into a delimiter of new line, what logic I have used? I have used environment dot new line to break this particular string. I hope I have answered your question, Vyas. Okay, perfect. Now let's go to the task for today. Sorry, for tomorrow. So task is very simple. You have to create a PDF. Create a PDF. I'm not going to share this PDF with you. Create a PDF. Uh, create a Word file and then convert it into PDF. Create a PDF of 10 pages. Okay. Now in those 10 pages, within those 10 pages, there is a specific keyword. Okay. Which is written on page number three page number six and page number nine. Now what I want you to do is I want you to find out whether a specific keyword. Now what you want to do is you want to take value from user, take input from user or keyword and then search that particular keyword. Now, for example, I'm telling you if that keyword is present on the page number three, page number six and page number nine, then I want you to break entire PDF into four PDFs which first PDF is going to be from one to three. Second PDF is going to be from four to six. Third PDF is going to be from seven to nine. And last PDF will contain only one page of 10th. So to do this operation, you have to utilize an activity, which is called as export PDF, sorry, extract, where is it? Extract PDF page range. You have to drag this activity. Now in this activity, what you have to do is you have to first of all, give a file name, your original PDF name. Let's say this is my PDF name. Okay. Let's say this is my PDF name. And I will write here. What is the page range I want to extract from this? So write your page range here. And then to what file I want to write it down. Let's say one to three dot PDF. This is my one, one of the PDF. So you have to create a logic which will automatically break down entire PDF into four multiple PDFs. Now there is keyword, let's say only present on fourth page and present on only let's say eighth page. Then this PDF should break down only into three parts. One is one to four. Another one is going to be five to eight. And the next one is going to be nine to 10. So first PDF will contain page from one to four. Second PDF will contain page from five to eight. Third PDF will contain page from nine to 10. Can you create this workflow? If you can, then I can definitely tell that you have very good coding skills, not coding skills, but very good logical analysis and very good, what you can say, data structure analysis. So go ahead, research on that. This is a very interesting task. Okay. I hope you complete it by end of the day tomorrow. So before we connect with tomorrow's class, we are going to see this task who else has completed. And also tomorrow as discussed, we are going to see Excel database and image automation. So tomorrow's class is really, really important because we are going to see Excel and data table operation and also how we can utilize database. Okay. Yes. I will send this task on email Kamaldeep so that you have a gist of it. Thank you so much guys for connecting. Let's see you guys tomorrow and please wait for me, my email. And if you want anything, just go ahead and check into the shared drive location. I will add all the PDFs.